is the rigorous schedule of a professional runner. On top of all these activities, there's even more that goes on behind the scenes. Their lifestyle is difficult, but if executed correctly, can lead to podium performances on the regional, national, or even international level. My track coach has a few principles that he preaches to all of his athletes. My favorite of which is that you must live the lifestyle if you wish to succeed in the sport of running. This has to be true, right? After all, a hobby jogger who runs a couple times a week and does their local park run on the weekends, certainly won't be running a 5K in 13 minutes in order to win the Olympic final. The lifestyle must be tough to get right, and as a part of my senior project, I chose to explore any and all facets of the lifestyle that I could think of. Physically, this was challenging, but more than anything, altering my lifestyle was a tested discipline. Could I achieve my goals? Could I overcome my challenges? And could I gain insights and practices that would carry on into my life beyond the project? I certainly had my doubts coming in, as I had a nagging shin injury from track season. Throughout my entire senior project, however, I became one with my body and learned that what I needed to do to succeed and what I needed to do to forge onwards towards my goals. Additionally, throughout the summer, the key to success became clear to me. Success in running, or anything for the matter, is a state of mind. If you wish to succeed in an area, you must hone in on that area and put in exactly what you want to get out of it. So. Where did I start? Beginning the final week of June, I started running six days a week. Starting off slow, but quickly building up my time on my feet so that my runs got longer and longer. Small aches, pains, tightnesses, and sorenesses quickly popped up. So I started to do more exercises, strengthening, and stretching before and after my runs so that my body was strong enough to perform. In order to connect with the community, I decided to tie in another passion of mine, which is cycling. Every Friday night, I met up with current and former students at BHS in a group ride that I organized in order to ride bikes around town. Every week provided a good opportunity not only to take a break from running, but also to learn more about somebody who I didn't know much about before. On top of my routine, I also started tracking my diet and making adjustments so that I was only eating what I needed without any of the extra unnecessary junk that riddles so many of our diets. Counting calories and changing what I ate on a daily basis was difficult and very boring at times. But after a week or so of dialing down my diet, I started to feel less dragged down by the food I ate and more energetic throughout the day. Changing my eating habits was a large challenge for me, and it took a while to get right. But the results were certainly satisfying. These are just a couple of examples of the ways that I adjusted my lifestyle to better reflect that of a professional runner's. The key takeaway of all of this to me, though, was that changing my lifestyle for a project was much more difficult than I had anticipated at first. Altering so many habits that have been built up for years is hard when you aren't constantly focused on your end goal. I once saw in a study that only 8% of people who set a goal for themselves actually end up achieving that goal. Now I can understand why. Nothing comes without work, and change certainly does not come instantly. Achieving a goal and trying something new requires active effort in order to foster growth and change in the area. In my case, I got back the effort that I put into my project, but just to what degree did I succeed in what I put in? Well, let's compare a few things here. On the left is what a typical week of training looked like for me, and on the right is what professional Joe Kleckers looked like as he started training for the Olympics this year. As you can see, I was running around 40 miles a week, compared to his 100, with 20 mile long runs and two rigorous workouts a week. Now, this is a snapshot of some of the foods that I ate in a day before I started my project. And on the right here is what a serious, dedicated athlete eats in a day. Notice how I have much fewer fruits, vegetables, and whole grains in my diet compared to theirs. Now, here are some of the ways that I recover after running. And then on the right is a list of some of the common practices of professional runners. My favorite of which is the $900 Norma Tech Leg Recovery System. Clearly, there are some discrepancies between me and the pros, but of course, this is to be expected. It's not my job to train, to race, or to eat perfectly, and I certainly don't have many of the resources that they do. 
That is the beauty of living the lifestyle to me, however. No matter how much you think you're putting in, there is always space to grow. And one of my biggest realizations from this entire experience is the extreme feeling of luck and gratitude that I have to be able to pursue what I love each and every day. We are all in a unique position where we have the choice to be able to pursue a passion or interest of ours on top of our daily lives. This is a freedom that not everyone in the world has. For example, the world junior champion in the 800 meters, Emmanuel Wanyoni from Kenya, had to drop out of primary school and work to earn less than $10 a month to help support his family. I found it astounding that I, a perfectly average high school runner, get to run every day simply because I want to, without any other life-dependent responsibilities weighing on me. For reference, he can run the 800 meters in a minute and 43 seconds. That's two laps around the track. My personal best in the event is a whopping 20 seconds slower in two minutes and three seconds, which means that if I were to race him, I wouldn't even finish within 100 meters of him. Realizing how fortunate we all are to have this opportunity to pick our interests and feed them, I encourage all of you to savor this and find something that you strive to be better in and work towards that each and every day. Lastly, I'd like to point out that living your lifestyle may be rewarding no matter what your lifestyle is. For some of you, this may be an art and music. Others, it may be a different sport than running. And some of you may simply choose to live a life where you go around being a positive light inside the lives of others. Regardless of what your lifestyle is though, achieving your goals and seeing the results of your hard work is one of the most satisfying and fulfilling experiences that you can get solely from the work that you put in. I remember the first few weeks of my training were incredibly discouraging. This foot. I'd wake up and my legs would ache and I could barely complete some runs. But despite my doubts and where my training would go, I persisted on and pursued my goals that I had highlighted in my training journal at the beginning of the summer. Number one. Number one was stay healthy. I can happily say that I had checked this goal off the list. Through personal research and doing free run work, I was able to develop a routine that helped me get over the shin injury that had been nagging me for so long. And I have been feeling as fit and fresh as possible in the past few weeks. Number two, enjoy the run. This simple goal was hard to stick to at first for me, but every week running started to feel easier and easier. With every long run, I start to feel smoother and smoother. By the final week of my training, I was enjoying the run so much that I was mouthing song lyrics on the treadmill while completing my easy runs, certainly making some people in the gym question my sanity. Number three, the foundations. To me, the foundations meant all the little things that rounded out the lifestyle, which included core work, hydration, eating, and recovery. Throughout the summer, I worked on one or two of these topics each day, such as changing my eating habits or experimenting with yoga. Altogether, I can happily say that I succeeded in this goal for the summer, although it will never be complete as the foundations can always be stronger. And number four, trust the process. Right next to this, I wrote that every day builds off the last. At points, this would be tough. Running was just feeling too difficult, or I'd feel tired and like I couldn't complete my runs, even though my training wasn't that intense. Regardless, I laced up my shoes every day and only focused on that day's run. By the end of the summer, I gained a lot more trust in both myself and the process, and I even got rewarded with a new 5K PR in the beginning of August. Achieving these goals and seeing my progression throughout the summer filled me with a true sense of accomplishment and pride in myself. Everyone always says that happiness is a choice. It's plastered all over mugs, t-shirts, stickers, or even just painted on the walls of your teacher's rooms. After having gone through the ups and downs of my project while pursuing the lifestyle, I can confidently confirm for myself that happiness is a choice. For me, it came from doing all the little things to the best of my ability and choosing to stick to my goals. My final long run of the summer was the best run of my life. I set out to run 12 miles quickly that day, but I didn't expect my quick pace to be as fast as it ended up being. By the time I finished, I had the largest runner's high of my entire life, and I couldn't help but feel a pure sense of accomplishment. That one run felt like the culmination of all the hard work and sacrifice I had made over the past eight weeks. And I knew that from there, the results would only continue to display themselves. Happiness was on the rail trail that day of the long run for me, and I chose to run straight towards it every day this summer. So as I wrap up, I would like to emphasize to all of you that a hidden happiness may just be, the hidden happiness we all may be seeking may just be hiding in our passions and interests. A quote that I heard while listening to a podcast this summer went along the lines of, 
you're going to be dead for a heck of a lot longer than you are alive. So why spend your time alive doing something that you don't want to? <coughs> I've adapted the end of this quote to now say, so why spend your time alive not trying to do the most of what you love? I hope that after today, all of you leave here with a newfound determination to chase after your goals and live your own individual lifestyles to the best of your abilities. Sharpen your skills until you are happy with the result, and I assure you that you'll surprise yourself with just how much you can achieve. Thank you.